A situation like this commonly happens in practice where we have a source of vibration transmitting the vibration energy to a structure or a receiver. In this case, the source is the centrifugal machine and the receiver is the floor or the table in the office. So how to tackle this kind of vibration problem? The first alternative, we can simply turn off the machine and the vibration will completely go away. But of course, this is not what we want because the machine has to run all the time. The second one is to treat the receiver structure. We can make the floor thicker maybe, or we put some damping on the table. But this is also not an efficient solution. And the third one is to modify the transmission path. So what we want to focus on is the connection between the source and the receiver because this is where the interaction happens. Our goal is to modify these mechanical connections so that the transfer of vibration energy is as small as possible to the receiver. So let's say if the machine gives excitation force with magnitude of F Newton and the force transmitted to the receiver is Ft Newton. So what we want is the ratio between Ft and F to be as small as possible. And the ratio of this force magnitude is called transmissibility. If we can successfully suppress the injected force Ft, then the value of the transmissibility will be reduced. However, the transmissibility depends on the frequency of vibrations. And this is where our analysis begins. Let's say the machine has amplitude of vibrations, displacement x as a function of time, xt. And we can model this part of the machine as the rigid mass m. And the connection between the machine and the receiver structure to have flexible property with stiffness K and damping C. So if we have this kind of rigid connections where the feet of the machine is rigidly bolted on the floor, then the value of K will be very large, which indicates a very stiff connections. The vibration amplitude is XT, and we can write down this in up or down, that's fine, as this is the case of dynamics, not static. The machine has excitation force F and the transmitted force Ft. For the mathematical analysis of this transmitted force to the receiver, we have to assume that the receiver is rigid, so we will have what we call the block force. And if we look at again at this transmitted force, the transmitted force is contributed by the force from the spring and the force from the damper at the connections. Both elements have displacement of x because the motion of the base is blocked. So the transmitted force can be expressed as Ft equals to Cx dot plus Kx. For the force excitation from the machine, we have to observe the whole part of the system above the receiver. The displacement of the mass is xt, and where the rigid mass causes the spring and damper to also have displacement of xt. So the force excitation is f equals to mx double dot plus cx dot plus kx. For ease of analysis, we can use the complex exponential notations, where f can be expressed as f e to the power j omega t, and also the same with transmitted force ft and also displacement xt. Then we can submit this complex exponential notation into the equations. For the first equations, we have ft e to the power j omega t. Remember that x dot is the first derivative of x. So then we have j omega c x 
e to the power j omega t plus k x e to the power j omega t. For the second equations, we have f e to the power j omega t. x double dot is the second derivative of x, so we have minus omega square m x e to the power j omega t plus j omega c x e to the power j omega t plus k x e to the power j omega t. On both sides, we have e to the power j omega t, so we can cancel them out. Then we can divide f t over f, so we have these equations. At both numerator and denominator, we have x, and again we can cancel them out. Then we can divide each of them with the stiffness constant k. And for the damping constant c, we replace it with 2 zeta omega n m, where zeta is the damping loss factor and omega n is the natural frequency. So we have the following expression. m over k here can be related to the natural frequency. Remember that omega n square is k over m. And so we can replace m over k with 1 over omega n square. We can cancel out this omega n. And we have 1 plus j2 zeta omega over omega n over 1 minus omega square over omega n square plus j2 zeta omega over omega n and this is ft over f and take note that this equation is complex which means it has real part and also imaginary part a real part and imaginary part let's move to the next screen so how to define the magnitude for this kind of complex expressions let's say if we have z equals to a plus jb over c plus jd the magnitude of z is the modulus or magnitude of a plus jb over the modulus of c plus jd so we have the square root of a square plus b square over the square root of c square plus d square so with this concept the magnitude of ft over f is the real part square plus the imaginary part square which is 1 plus 4 zeta square omega square over omega n square and square the whole thing then again the real part square plus imaginary part square which is the square of the whole 1 minus omega square over omega n square and plus 4 zeta square omega square over omega n square and again square root the whole thing and this magnitude of ft over f we call it transmissibility and next is to see how this transmissibility is affected by the structural parameters which is the mass stiffness and damping of the vibrating system and also to see its behavior with the excitation frequency. I'll see you in the next video. Bye bye. If you like this learning content, please subscribe to my channel Azma Putra or you can visit my website www.azmaputra.com.